What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to show you the exact three step process that we use within the evolution program to help our clients lose 10 to 20 kilos in just under 90 days. If you follow these steps and implement the tips and tricks that we show in this video, I guarantee that you will see similar results. It'll be faster, easier, and you're going to learn a lot. We're going to break down a lot of myths, give you a really good idea on how to structure your programs, your nutrition. So stick around, watch the whole video because you're going to walk away with a lot of information. A very common problem that a lot of people that we work with is just lack of time. But I'll show you how we can break that down and make programs and meal plans that you enjoy and work specifically around your schedule. You'll be given the exact formula to get things moving forward. And this will change your life in ways you probably don't even know. By looking good, getting in shape, you'll become a lot more confident. You'll attract a lot more opportunities and be even treated and looked by other people differently. You'll feel less tired, more focused, become more productive, make more money, attract a higher quality partner, and find yourself in higher quality circles as well. For some people, you might be in a situation where your health conditions are quite critical, and this may literally add years to your life. The world that we live in treats you differently based on the way you look. It's a sad reality. And the reason for that is because our body is a direct reflection of who we are. It shows that you're organized, that you care, and that you look after yourself. And in today's day and age, so many people waste so much money on materialistic items such as cars, jewelry, clothing, shoes, whatever it is, just to try to feel a bit more confident. But imagine not having to rely on these expensive things to feel good about yourself. Imagine wearing a $5, $10 t-shirt or $5 tank top from Target and not caring about what other people think and making the clothing itself look good just because of the way it sits in your body. The gym has really changed my life. All the lessons and philosophies that I learned and translated into other areas, it's more than just, you know, going to the gym, looking good, feeling good, lifting a couple of heavy metal plates. It's really about the philosophy that you learn and can translate into other areas. I'll show you a little bit more on how it's impacted my life and literally where I started and how much it's changed my life. So I was once in a very similar position as you. Maybe you might have a little bit more weight to lose, but the process is ultimately the same. And just to show you that this works for everyone, it doesn't matter how you look, where you're starting from and how much weight you have to lose. We got a couple of guys here that has worked with us for quite some time. Maybe in the past, some of them are still existing clients. Here we have Ansh Deep who's worked with us for 12 weeks. And within that time frame, he lost about 20 kilos. He breathes better. He moves better. His joints don't hurt as much. He's stronger. He's happier. And he feels a lot more confident. If you check out his Instagram, he's always smiling. He's a, such a loving and kind dude. It was honestly a pleasure to be a part of his journey. We got a couple more boys there. You got Nick and Nicholas in the bottom and they're all really busy guys, right? So it doesn't really matter how much time you might not have available to you, but it really comes down to prioritization and creating a program that fits your schedule. We even have Arthur here who has made such an incredible change. He lost 20 kilos. He was telling me about how training has really impacted other areas of his life in ways he didn't even realize until he, you know, took a bit of a pause and reflected. But little things like this, they do stack up. Here we have Nathan and Lee. They're both parents and work very busy corporate jobs. This was Lee after 12 weeks. And I think this was Nathan after about 16 or so weeks. This was the leanest and strongest they've both ever been. Nathan here is a bit of a picky eater and that's okay. So we made sure that the meal plan created for him was enjoyable and, you know, we changed it frequently enough. And I'm going to show you today on how to do the same. So that way you can stay consistent with it. But I remember one of his favorite meals was his spaghetti bolognese and also we made this recipe up it was very easy to prepare because a lot of our guys you don't want to spend too much time cooking but you also want to make it enjoyable to eat it was two slices of toast maple syrup strawberries on top and it was just like a nice sweet meal to have before bed to curb his cravings you know the textures the flavors and that was one of the meals that he really looked forward to at the end of the day and here's an old photo of me i was already going to the gym for about four years it doesn't even look like it you know i was so lost and confused i was seeing progress but not at the rate that i wanted you know i didn't really have structure i kept hitting plateaus and i was tired all the time despite amounts of hours i had sleep but essentially i was wasting a lot of time in the gym and i was also working a part-time sales job whilst being in university so it was really difficult for me to find the time to be able to do everything at once you felt suffocated it was overwhelming so if that's you i completely understand where you're coming from it is a lot to manage and this was me two years later i hired my first coach who actually sucked then i hired my second coach who also sucked then i hired my third coach and fortunately enough he was very well educated 
and I'm very grateful to have crossed paths with him. So if you worked with coaches in the past and you didn't really see the results that you were looking for, they didn't give you the support that you needed, the direction, the guidance, the knowledge and expertise that you were after. I completely feel you. I've been there before and it sucks. It's unfortunate, but just keep at it, stay consistent. And again, I hope this video gives you a lot of insight on what it is exactly that you need to be doing and maybe even where you're going wrong right now. So everything I'll show you today, it's applicable for everyone. Doesn't matter how old you are, how busy you are, whether or not you're new to the gym or have been training for three to five years, this process, I guarantee, will elevate your physique to the next level and will improve your motivation, your energy, your confidence, and just, again, your overall life quality. So just before we dive into the three-step process, I wanna share with you my journey, hoping that it will inspire you because some of you might be in the same position I was five or 10 years ago. Some of you guys might already know me, but for the people that are new here, my name is Alex Mendoza. I've been training for almost a decade. I started as a very skinny kid and was heavily bullied growing up. This completely destroyed my self-confidence and I struggled with anxiety for the longest time. I was skinny, I was Asian, I was a minority. So I was a very easy target for a lot of the bigger kids. Now, one of the reasons you can see my hair here covered half my face because I was very insecure about my Asian features. So I tried to hide it as much as I can. And as you can see in the photos, I don't look very happy. I got sick of just not having the confidence to stand out for myself and just take control, take charge of my life. When I was in my early 20s and first got into the workforce, my lack of confidence, again, made it very difficult for me to take charge and responsibility in specific roles. You know, I wasn't taken very seriously by my bosses. I lacked leadership skills, speaking skills, which heavily limited my growth. And to this day, you know, still something I'm working on. I'm still trying to get better at speaking. But while being in university, you know, I wasn't able to make a lot of money. I couldn't provide financially for my ex. And I was so focused on holding on to every single dollar without even realizing that by spending that into the right places, it would actually accelerate my growth. Eventually, she cheated on me with her boss, which made me feel even worse and made me question my value and self-worth even more. I spiraled out of control, fell off track, started drinking just to mask the pain, distract myself, and I really wasn't happy with the direction I was going towards. My life felt so meaningless. I hated my job. I hated everything around me. I woke up unhappy. I didn't have direction. The gym has taught me lessons and perspectives, disciplines, and work ethics that has allowed me to generate over seven figures online at the age of 25. My relationship with my family has been the best it's ever been. I've been sober for four years. I no longer care what other people think of me. I do whatever I want that makes me happy and I get to travel the world eating out different foods, trying different restaurants, and creating core memories while still being in shape. Throughout my journey, I've been able to meet really cool, like-minded people, great experiences and opportunities I never thought would be available to me. And I want more and more people to experience the same journey and go through it themselves because honestly, you're missing out. Confidence is such a freeing feeling. Back when I was a very skinny kid, nobody cared about me. I didn't matter to people. Nobody heard me, nobody saw me. But now, you know, when I walk in a room, all of a sudden, everyone wants to be your friend. They want to get to know you. Everyone's asking, how did you do it? How did you do that? And always asking for help because now they have something of value that they can tangibly and physically see that they would like for themselves. On top of all this, the coolest thing that I've been able to do was help hundreds of other guys that were going through maybe what you're going through or what I went through, regain control of their life, build their confidence, lose that 10 to 20 kilos of stubborn fat, and just overall build a better life. To break it down, I'm going to take you from where you currently are to where you want to be and going through some of the roadblocks that might be stopping you from getting there. One of the biggest problems people face is lack of energy. But here's the thing, right? You're not actually tired. Your eating is all over the place, leading you to nutrient deficiency, which is impacting your energy levels, your focus, productivity, just your overall life quality. Your diet really contributes to why you feel sluggish, unmotivated, and why you don't have energy. You don't have a set routine and you simply don't move enough. Those are the reasons why you actually feel tired. And if you're already training, one of the common problems people face is that they might be training incorrectly or too much. They don't have the right nutrition to back up their training, which is why you feel so fatigued and tired. Another problem you probably face is lack of time. I get it, you're a busy guy, you work a job, and you have other commitments. But in reality, it's not the lack of time that you have because everybody has the same amount of hours within the day. It really comes down to poor time management and poor prioritization. The biggest mistake that you can make and that a lot of people make is waiting for when they're very desperate and feeling a lot of pain to actually make a change. Things get worse and worse and it hurts more and more that eventually you have no other choice 
but to fix the problem. But instead of going through all that, why don't you take precautionary action now so you can avoid the suffering later? People wait way too long until the situation just continues to get worse. And then when they do decide to start, it's so much harder. And look, I know it sounds a bit extreme, but this is the reality that some of you might be facing. Another big one is you're probably experiencing a lack of motivation. And you lack motivation because you lack results and you lack results because you lack knowledge. It's very important to identify the core stems of your problems. That way we can implement the right solutions. And if you've been trying to reach your goals, you've tried in the past, but it just didn't work. It's because you have bad programming, you lack experience, you lack customization, which makes it difficult to sustain, progress, and follow. All this comes back to your lack of understanding. Maybe you don't know how much or what to eat either. You might be following restricted diet plans that you saw on TikTok or Instagram. You're not tracking calories, again, because you don't understand how training and nutrition works. And you know, that's okay because I'll show you how to overcome these problems in this video. So having broken that down, and now that you understand your core problems, let's dive into the four-step process that has helped hundreds of guys similar to yourself get in better shape, better health, and live a better life. These four steps allow us to transition into the three core process that you can implement yourself. And I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but let me explain and you'll understand what I mean. The first thing we do is conduct a lifestyle analysis. Now you're going to want to do something a little bit similar to this. This gives us the information that we need to be able to perform step one, which is to create custom protocols. And I'm going to pull up an example of some questions that we like to use, some questions that you can ask yourself, which you should probably consider when designing your protocols to make it realistic, sustainable, and easy to follow. So here's a response from one of our existing members. Some key questions we like to look at is when are your break times throughout the day? And when are your current meal times? With this information, we know what to make, when to eat it, that way you're not packing like tuna and rice and opening it in the office and then stinking up the whole place. You know, you don't want to be that guy. But my point is we try to make it super convenient. So if you're a tradie and you're on site, you know, we'll pack granola bars or something easy to go, something you can fit in your pocket. Or if you're running around, you know, you're going from A to B, you're driving a car, we can create an on-the-go shake, as I like to call them, filled with the right nutrients to prepare you for your day or just, again, depending on where you are. Now, we also look at when they typically start training. Injuries as well is important to consider. This allows us to identify what movements to avoid or what areas that actually need strengthening and even investigate a little bit further on what caused that injury in the first place. And also, how many days a week can you train consistently? And consistently is a key word. We rather you train three days a week consistently rather than three days, four days, five days, two days, right? That creates a lot of imbalances and you're not able to create a program that's curated and well-planned because there's way too many changing variables. I'm not going to share Darnell's photos, but we typically get you to submit some check-in images as well. That way we can establish some baselines so we can create some comparison images later on. Now, once we analyze the data, ask a couple questions to get further clarification in certain situations and certain preferences, we then move forward to the meal plan creation process. Before I get into that, I'm going to give you a quick crash course regarding nutrition, just so you have some basic level of understanding to be able to do this yourself. If you do have questions, feel free to message us on Discord or even message me on Instagram for help. I'm going to keep this surface level enough so that you know what to do. What is a calorie? A calorie is essentially energy. Everything that you eat has calories and calories are broken up into macros. Proteins are found in meat. They are made of chemical building blocks called amino acids. Now, amino acids build and repair muscles, and one gram of protein is four calories. You also have carbohydrates, which is your primary fuel source, and your body breaks this down into glucose. Now, there's two types of carbohydrates, simple carbs, which gives you quick energy, perfect to eat before training, and we also have complex carbohydrates, which take a little bit longer to digest and enter the bloodstream and is great for keeping you fuller and a more sustainable form of energy. Now, one gram of carb is four calories. Then we have fats, which is your secondary source of energy, and they help absorb vitamins and regulate hormone production. Now, fats do not make you fat. They play an important role, just like proteins and carbs. By limiting your fat intake, can negatively impact your testosterone production, which overall can negatively influence mood and life quality. Now, one gram of fat is nine calories. Fat sources are typically very dense in calories, so you don't want to overconsume them. So how do we find our total daily energy expenditure? For this example, we will use a calculator that we have on our client meal plan dashboard, which looks something like this. You can also use an online calculator. All you have to do is Google TDEE calculator, and I'll show you how to do that as well. Enter your height, so I'm 170. I am 79 kilos, 25 years old, and my activity level is extra active. Now, daily intake to sustain my weight is 3459, 3,459 calories. That is my TDEE. You can also go to Google and look up TDEE, 
calculator. And I like to use this link here sometimes. And again, same process, enter your age, gender, height, weight, and activity levels. So we're going to click extra active, click calculate, and this will spit out some numbers. This gives you a really good place to start. Now, if you're trying to lose weight, aim to lose, you know, just to begin with, maybe 500 grams per week. This brings it down to 2,645 calories given the metrics provided. Extreme weight loss, which is one kilo per week, will be around 2,145 calories. And based on my current circumstances, it's, I would say these calculators are relatively accurate. I would lose about a kilo per week eating around 2,200, 2,300 calories per day. Once you've established this to lose fat, decrease by 300 to 500 calories. This will put you in a calorie deficit, right? This is where we're going to be. If you want to optimize muscle growth, do the opposite. Increase by 300 or so calories. If you're trying to lose fat, depending on your body composition, you can aim to lose about 500 grams per week up to 1.5 kilos. For some, it might even be 2 kilos. It really depends on your protocols, your programming, and your body composition. Now, if you're eating a surplus and trying to optimize muscle growth, Aim for about 500 grams gain every week. Now, the next step would be to figure out your macronutrients. If you go down to the same website, click macro calculator, and then over here, enter your data and what your goal is. Let's just say we're trying to lose maybe 500 grams per week. So click calculate, and there you have it. It will show you how many grams of protein, carbs, and fats that you need to be eating and your total calories per day. Depending on what phase you're in, typically when calories start to drop for my clients, I try to opt in for higher amounts of protein, although this really depends on a few different variables. For safekeeping, I usually try to do one gram per centimeter of height. There's a few different ways to calculate your daily protein intake, and it really depends on individual needs. For the most part, I typically try to stay on moderate to high carb diets with lower fats, not too low, just enough to help regulate hormones. But because fats are so dense in calories, they don't keep you full for very long. A great place to start is just following the balance tab. Alternatively, you can click create your own. And here you can slightly increase your carbohydrates. And as you can see, your fat slowly drop, maybe increase your protein. But if you're new, I would just suggest to stick to the balanced diet as a starting point. Now that we know how many calories to eat, how many grams of proteins, carbs, and fats we need to consume every day, we now need to identify our nutritional baselines. Every day you're going to wake up, weigh yourself first thing in the morning in an empty stomach with minimal clothing, right? This gives us a more accurate representation of our actual weight. Then we're going to find the weekly average. For example, if you weigh yourself five times a week and these are your daily results, add it all up, divide it by five, and this will be your average body weight for that week. Then on week two, you're going to want to do the same thing, add it all up, divide it by five, and now this is your average body weight. And from week to week, you're going to want to subtract and find the difference between the two data points. Here, we were 78.9 on week one, and then 78.2 on week two. That's a total difference of 700 grams, showing you that you're headed towards the right direction if you're trying to lose fat. Now, if you're stuck and your weight is not really moving on a week to week basis, you can do a few things, right? You can either increase your expenditure by increasing your activity levels, you can drop your calories by another 300 to 500 calories. A common problem that I actually see from a lot of newcomers is that they're eating so low. They're eating 1200 to 1600 calories and they're not seeing their weight drop. If anything, their weight is actually starting to increase. If you're in this situation, you've been eating very restrictively for a long period of time, it's time to work your way back up. So this is what I like to do with majority of my clients. We start here, week one, where we establish baselines and take note on their physical and emotional response. This gives us a really good indicator on how well it's working for them. Then from week two, all the way up to week 12, we'll either transition into fat loss phase or a growing phase, just depending on individual goals. From week 12, you can continue to diet them for week 24 if your body is responding well. If not, maybe somewhere in between, you might have to transition into a maintenance or reversal period. Now, I was talking about earlier how if you've been dieting down for a long time and you're not seeing any more change, you're going to want to do this. This regulates hormones, allow your body to recover, which then allows us to either go back into another fat loss phase, or if you're pretty happy with your body fat percentage, go into a growing phase. So it really depends on how you look like and what your goals are and also how your body is responding given the protocols. Here's a couple of common myths that people tend to deal with. There's no such thing as good food or bad food. It really just comes down to how much we're eating. If your maintenance is like 2,500 calories, it doesn't matter if you're eating, let's say 2,700 calories and it's like made out of rice and chicken or, you know, let's just quote unquote healthy foods you're still going to gain weight. If you're eating like McDonald's, but your total intake is like 2,100 calories, you will still lose weight. Fasted versus non-fasted cardio also makes zero difference. Fasted versus non-fasted training actually makes a difference. And don't blindly take supplements, get blood work. This is a very common thing that people do. 
and carbs are not bad for you. You can't turn fat into muscle. You can't fat reduce specific areas. You can lose weight, build muscle, and get stronger all at the same time. And also your anabolic window does not exist. Cardio is also good for you. It doesn't burn or kill muscle. Just don't do high intensity cardio as this will negatively impact your recovery levels, especially if you're in a calorie deficit. Now that we understand the basics and fundamentals of nutrition, let me take you through the process that we use when we create meal plans for our clients. So again, what we're going to want to do is go back to the client dashboard. So this is what we use to create our meal plans. So typically to make things very easy from the start, we're just going to include foods that we enjoy eating. But what we typically do is look at their lifestyle analysis sheet and go off their responses and preferences. Let's pretend I'm creating one for myself. The first thing we're going to want to do is allocate the meal times based on their response. Let's just say in this example, we're going to use 10 a.m., 1 p.m. And let's say they go to the gym at 5 p.m. So pre-workout will be at 4 p.m. And for their final meal, post-workout, 7 p.m. I'm just going to make one meal for this example. For breakfast, let's say I like eggs. We're going to go protein and we'll have a whole egg in there as well and for carbs if we're dieting let's say we'll use a crumpet there we go golden crumpets awesome and for vegetables we might want some onions and we might want some mushrooms so veggie mushroom so a cool thing here is under replacement it will showcase suggestions of other carb sources that way you can make a few different variations and you don't get bored of eating the same thing let's say you want 200 grams one whole egg one whole crumpet 100 grams of onion and 100 grams of mushroom. Now, what I do is I repeat the same process, you know, creating the meals that I actually enjoy eating. And then from there, manipulate the quantity in order to match my daily requirements. To track your food, you're going to want to use a food logging app. You can use whatever you want. My personal suggestion would be MyFitnessPal. Just go to the App Store, download it. Use the free version. You don't need to pay for it. And by understanding food, you'll be able to manipulate your calories and macros to create a meal plan that works specifically for you. I personally don't follow a meal plan. The only meals that I strictly follow are pre-workout meals and post-workout meals to really optimize training performance and recovery. And throughout the day, I'm not too pedantic about it. I like to eat more in the evening, so I'll eat less carbs throughout the day and more of it at night, so my sleep is better. A cool feature that we do have on this and that is super helpful is if you go to serving calculator, and let's say you know, you're know you missing 100 grams of carbs at the end of the day, that's a lot, you don't wanna do that. Go to foods, click the drop down button, and it will showcase a series of food products that you can have instead. Let's just say, random search, you want wheat bix my personal favorite. It will say 152 grams of wheat bix is 100 grams of carbs. So that's pretty handy over there. And this even has a grocery list, a dashboard where we track all the calories and macros for our clients to really identify and understand what's going to happen to avoid tight toes. And we also have a tab where it showcases the plan, showing our clients exactly what training phase they're in, what nutrition phase they're in to give them clarity and direction. Now you're probably thinking, oh, but I don't have that. What do I use? Don't worry, I've attached that template for free in the description below. So you can go ahead, try it out yourself, give it a crack. One thing that we do have available as well is that if you click the product link, it will redirect you to the website showing you exactly what product to purchase and where to purchase it from. Alternatively, you can order it online, add it to your trolley and directly ship it to your house. I'm a busy guy. Don't like going to the grocery store, so I'll just get them to deliver it straight on my front door. Once a meal plan is created, we then transition to creating customized training protocols. When constructing your own program, here's a couple of things that you should probably consider. Is it sustainable? Can you follow this program consistently? If you can only train three times a week, create a training program that optimizes three sessions per week. That's a lot better than going three times in one week, four times in another week, and seven times in a week later. That will only lead to imbalances, injuries, and a disproportionate physique, which you ultimately want to avoid. The next thing you want to look at is what areas do you need to focus on? Look at your body and self-assess. What do you need to work on the most? During a training block, you can only focus on two or three muscle groups at a time. Now, the biggest thing that I see every time someone joins a program is that they lack a lot of lateral delts, a lot of lats, and a lot of vastus lateralis, the outer portion of your quad. So when I look at program design, I delegate a lot of volume into these specific regions so that we can kind of create that X-shaped physique. And as you can see here with Dylan, we've definitely blown up his lats. His shoulders are looking a lot fuller. And you can see a lot of growth and development in his quads as well, creating a better silhouette. Also take into account how much time you can actually spend in the gym. A lot of you may be in a time crunch due to your careers and other commitments. And that's completely okay. You can get amazing results within 45 minute workouts when you design them correctly. I only train about one hour per day for five times a week. In situations where you don't have much time, 
implement drop sets, supersets, giant sets, maybe even myo sets, other training methods to make sure you're getting a lot of intensity in a short period of time. So you don't have to spend hours in the gym and see very, very minimal results. Even then, you don't necessarily need to do that as long as you're progressively overloading, which I'll dive into a little bit later in this video as well to show you how you can do that yourself. Now, when you're designing your training program, here's a couple of brief training rules that you should probably follow and implement. This is obviously very situational and varies from person to person. So it's kind of difficult to provide umbrella advice. And that's why when you follow all these online resources that are for free, yes, you'll see results, but eventually it will stop because you need something designed for you. Like our body is an adaptive mechanism. So we need to make continual changes, but then also we can make changes way too early because we do need some time to gather data information. So I know it sounds a little bit overwhelming and confusing, but this is the reality when it comes up to really making sure that we're not wasting our time in the gym and we're getting the most out of the sessions that we do at the gym. How many sets per muscle group is a very common question asked. Research generally suggests between 10 to 20 sets per week, and that's per muscle group for majority of the people. It really, again, depends on your rate of recovery, your sleep, and your nutritional protocols as well. But that's a great place to start. How long should your rest times be? It really depends on how taxing the movement is. For bigger compound lifts like deadlift, squats, and bench, you generally take between three to five minutes for rest. And for smaller muscle groups and more isolated based movements, like let's say a bicep curl, anywhere from 90 seconds to two minutes is also a sufficient amount of time. Another question you might ask, is how frequent should you train a muscle group based on studies anywhere between two to three times per week is effective for most individuals try to avoid doing bro splits training one muscle group per day it's very redundant to do 10 movements of chess and doing like five sets each it's just completely unnecessary and if you're able to do that you're not training with the right intensity. Now, I'm sure you've heard of the term progressive overload. This is super important. People throw this term around, but never really explain it or show how to progressively overload. When it comes into program design, I like to split it up into 12 weeks. And within a 12 week block, there are three different training phases that I like to use. A training phase can last up to five weeks. Phase one is usually the first five weeks. Phase two is the next four. And then phase three is the next three. So what's the differences and when do you transition between these phases? So typically for the first two weeks of the program, you're trying to identify how much weight you can lift and establish baselines, right? But as you get deeper into your training program, it will become more difficult to progress. So in order to build new tissue, you need to increase total volume. Progressive overload simply means lifting more and harder than before. And there's an equation to that. So volume is calculated by sets times weights times reps. When you want to increase total volume, this is the order that you want to increase these variables by. First thing you should increase on a week-to-week -week basis is weight load. Now, if you hit a point where you can no longer increase weight load without breaking your form, you're going to want to focus on increasing rep count. So that means continue to use the same weight, but just get one or two more reps. As you can see, this changes the total volume lifted. It's very important to maintain form, intensity, and rest time. These are the variables that we do not change. So the only two variables I'd like to focus on is increasing either rep count or weight load. When you can no longer increase that, that's when we manipulate total set count. So how do we actually apply that, right? So for example, you get a training program and it's three sets for 15 reps to 12 reps. This is our target. This is what we're trying to achieve. This is a common mistake people make. Avoid doing 15 reps, doing the same way consecutively on each set. This shows that the first set just was not hard enough. So this is the correct way of doing it, right? Due to fatigue accumulation as a natural progression, one of these variables will decrease. In most circumstances, I like to get all my clients to maintain weight load and reduce rep count. There are other ways to do this, but this is one of the most common methods. Other times I might make a couple of changes, but what I'm trying to get at is avoid doing this, right? Do not continue to repeat unless specifically programmed for a very specific reason. But if you're trying to grow, this is usually the way to go. So we continue to repeat this process for about a five week period. Eventually, as you continue to go through this five weeks, it's going to be harder and harder to increase weight load and increase rep count. So what do you do next? From week five to week nine, we make changes to the program. We increase set count. So in this situation, instead of three sets, we're going to do four sets. Just as a general rule, I don't typically do more than two to three sets per movement. Really depends on rate of progression, but I try to stay within the two to three set count. When you're in week nine, all the way to week 12, you do the same and increase total set count. Now let's just say you're doing four, you're gonna be doing five. Again, I never do five. I just use it as an example. The most I would do is maybe four and then a drop set at the end. It's just unnecessary. If you are short in time, you can do drop sets on the last set, for example. So for this last set, you do 15 kills for eight, and then you might do, let's say, seven for another eight. 
just as an example. Your total volume for this entire movement will dramatically increase. Something worth noting is that we're not just looking at one set total volume, we're looking at either the whole movement, so the whole three sets, or the entire day's worth of volume. And just as a benchmark, anywhere from literally five to 20% increase every week is completely fine. So in phase number three, things get really difficult and really challenging. Your performance will continue to slowly decline. Training becomes very difficult and becomes very exhausting. So what does that mean? A deloading phase is essentially just a one week period where you drop total volume. It could be weight load or a set count to give your body a bit of time to rest and recover. So during that deloading phase, let's say you're doing four sets now, you can drop it down to two sets and you can even reduce training intensity by having four or five reps in reserve. After the deload is incomplete, you again start from phase one all the way to phase three. I hope that makes sense and it's not too overwhelming or confusing. Again, if you do have questions, feel free to shoot us a message on the Discord community or on Instagram. Now, this is the part where I say it looks simple and for some, it might. For others, there might be a lot of numbers and it might look very, very confusing. Now, with time and experience, it does become a little bit easier to navigate through, but along the way, you will make a lot of mistakes, especially if you don't have the right guidance, experience, and knowledge. And that's why I created the Evolution Program. Again, as I said at the very start of this video, I want you guys to be able to experience what I've experienced having completely 360'd my life, starting as a skinny, insecure, unconfident kid to the person that I am today, running a seven-figure business, managing a team of 10, and living literally the life of my dreams. And it's so achievable for you as well. It just comes down to a matter of making a decision. Making progress is hard and it's confusing, right? But what if I can show you how to see results in just four weeks? What if I can show you how to make progress forever and make that process easy as well, right? Without the guesswork, the restricted diets and doing hours of pouring cardio. What do you think that would do for you? You'll be more confident, you'll be more focused, productivity will improve, you have more time to focus on other important tasks, build habits and discipline, gain respect from other people, become more attractive to your spouse or partner, or even make the partner finding process easier, <laughs> extend your lifespan, improve your energy and overall your life quality. So I'll show you exactly what you get as part of the program. You'll have access to all the tools and resources you were shown earlier in this video. As I said, I've also attached blank templates in the description for you to give it a try yourself. But with the program, we do everything for you. All you have to do is go to the gym and eat the food, right? We're going to map out your entire timeline so you know exactly what part of your training phase you're in, give you exact clarity to keep you moving forward. You'll be given a designated coach, someone that will always be by your side whenever you need direct support from them. So if you're out and about, you don't know what to eat or don't have access to equipment, just shoot them a message. They'll be there for you. You'll also get a meal plan with different variations so that you don't get bored. It will include meals you enjoy eating and showcase calories and macros per product per meal and even cater towards your work schedule. Our coaches are certified, giving you insight in both theoretical and practical experience. And to keep you accountable, to avoid plateaus, each week you'll have two live meetings, one one-on-one -on -one and one group call. During these calls, we teach you and educate you on why we make the changes so you can do it yourself later and not have to rely on coaches in the future. We want you to walk away with so much knowledge that you can eventually even teach other people how to do it. You'll get a fully comprehensive grocery list, giving you the direct links of each product, and we will guarantee you results. You'll also have direct access to the app, which will allow you to track your data, which will be sent to us in the team to analyze and give you feedback on what you're doing wrong, what you can improve on, and what's missing. If you do work with us, we guarantee that you'll do it right the first time and save you months on trying to figure out everything on your own. We're so confident in what we do. If you don't see the results within the first 30 days, we'll pay you $5,000. If that's you and you've said, hey, Alex, I've seen enough of your content. I trust you. I have faith in you. I know that you can take me to where I want to be. And I'm sick of joining other programs, trying all these free eBooks, cookie cutter programs, getting overwhelmed with all the information out there. If you're tired of waking up in the morning, looking in the mirror and just feeling unhappy about yourself, not having the confidence to do or say whatever you want. If that's you, then go ahead and click that for. And if you're not ready to make a positive change, please don't waste my time. Don't waste yours. Just don't book a call. But again, if you're hungry and want to finally see a change, make a difference in your life, go ahead and book the call. Worst case scenario, you leave with a lot of value. So go ahead, book the call and we'll show you the exact next steps to take.